Our computers used to be these black boxes that you really didn't change much to them. There used to be no USB drives. We didn't have external hard drives to plug in. There were no extra peripherals that you were always plugging in and unplugging from. You didn't have a lot of MP3 players to do that with. And so you didn't need a lot of management for these peripherals. Well, of course, these days, you've got all kinds of devices you can plug into your computer. So we need to know how to use the operating system to be able to manage those peripherals. As you're probably aware when you're working in the Windows environment, you're always using these devices. You can plug in, you can pull it out, especially the USB drives, your mobile telephone, and a lot of other devices. But you can't just remove it from the operating system without giving a warning to the operating system that you're going to do that. You need to safely remove that piece of hardware. This gives the operating system the chance to close out any files that may be open to make sure that nothing else is writing to that device. That Windows can now tell it, you need to stop writing because we're going to remove this from the operating system especially if this is a device like a USB flash drive where you don't want the data on that flash drive to be corrupted. If you look at the bottom part of your screen along the system tray, you will see a little tiny icon that has a little computer with a green check mark next to it. And if you mouse over it, it is safely remove hardware. If you right mouse click on this, you'll get a safely remove hardware dialog where you can open up a complete dialog box that tells you all of the different devices that you may have plugged in at the moment. If you simply left mouse click that, it will show you the same information but in a much smaller view. So there's a couple of ways that you can remove that device. If you right uh, left mouse click and select it, you can remove it. Or you can right mouse click, bring up your safely remove hardware dialog. And from here, you can look at the properties of that device or stop it. So you've got a few more options available when you pop up that full dialog box. If you're clicking down here and you're pulling up a device and you see safely remove USB mass storage device drive E colon, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe that's your cue to right mouse click and open up this full safely remove hardware dialog. You can also display device components. If any are removable, it will show you what device components are there. And this is a SanDisk Cruiser USB device. Oh yes, that's my SanDisk Cruiser USB flash drive. I do want to remove this device, so I'm going to stop it. And it says we're going to stop this, which means all of these other components that rely on that piece of hardware will also be stopped. And that's exactly what I'd like to do. And it says now we can remove, safely remove that device from the computer. And I can virtually reach over on this device and remove it from this system if I'd like to. And we'll remove that SAN disk. And now if we click OK, it's now going to remove that device from the Windows system. And now I can take that disk out and do something else with it. Let's see what we can remember about our post-installation tasks. Our first question is, what does a down arrow or a red X mean in the Windows Device Manager? Well, if you see that, that means that you have disabled that particular piece of hardware. You have administratively gone into Device Manager and said, I don't want to use that piece of hardware. The second question, where does Windows store virtual memory? Well, it stores it, of course to a drive, a hard drive. And more specifically, it stores it on the boot partition of the hard drive. And the last question, where can you find most power options in your Windows operating system? And if you remember, we use the control panel, and it's under this applet called Power. That's your place to go if you ever want to reconfigure anything having to do with power and your Windows operating system. This covers what we needed to know for our 22701 Section 3.3, where we're configuring the operating system now that we have everything installed. If you'd like to watch any of our free videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or much more, you can visit our website at 3aplus.com.